All right, now can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. There we go. And can you hear yourself now? Yep. Yep, that's right. That's right. Colin, thank you so much for coming on today. No problem. I have never spoke to a photographer <laughs> in the way that we're going to get into. Awesome. So what exactly is this? This is Smile Talk with Jacob, where we bring in masters of their crafts to speak to how they help people develop and enhance their self-esteem and confidence. I was so excited. I say I say that when when all my guests come on, but like it's it's the truth. I was so excited to get you on today because you bring a unique perspective in capturing moments of people's lives that they can look back to forever. Right. Forever. Yeah. So, before we dive too deep into that, I wanted to know who is Colin Stevens. Who is Colin Stevens? Colin Stevens is a multifaceted guy, many talents, many hats. Um, I feel I'm a graphic designer, photographer. I've been doing photography s since about 2015. Mm -hmm. And I just started it in college as one of my, you know, preliminary courses. And I just had a little starter camera. Yeah. And I started to get serious with it throughout my college career. Um, ended up minoring in it. I was just taking so many photo classes. They were like, you can minor in it. So I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. And then I graduated in 2018. And in 2019, I moved out of the parents' house. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm going to really apply some pressure with this photography stuff. I love retouching and editing. So it was just something that I did for fun, you know? It was like yeah. a passion project of a sort. And more and more people would, you know, Colin, can you take pictures of me? Can you take pictures of me? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. And then one thing led to another and I'm like, I haven't taken up a lot of time taking pictures. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. my friends are pressuring me like, you should get a price list. You should make an Instagram. You yeah. should. So I'm like one thing at a time, like I'm just taking my time with it. Um, I do graphic design. So I met a lady at my job and she's like, I have this camera. It's basically brand new. Like, do you want it? I can, you can pay me like in two installments. Yeah. We can, whatever, whatever you want. I just right. don't use it. So Ever since then, I got this Canon camera, and it's really changed the game. And I started incorporating different lighting techniques and just letting people know what I do when I see them. And I'm like, you want to take pictures from me? Like, just be like a muse in a sense. Yeah. And, yeah, I uh, shot for this one auto collection, perfect auto collection in 2021. Yeah. And ever since that shoot, um, we shot – with some models in an auto dealership yeah and ever since that shoot i've been booked of like a couple times a month like people ask and that shoot really introduced me to like speed lights and just yeah. an entirely different genre of like photography area so yeah interesting so what i heard from what you just said is we have advanced lighting techniques we have different equipment that's being used and then we just have an overall collection of knowledge that's been gained through what i would call a relatively short period of time yeah. and you spoke at the beginning of where your interests started and where it's transpired to now but i wanted to hone in on that beginning side of it okay so you went to bowling green yes. you graduated yep. and were you doing graphic design and photography right out of the gate no so i majored in a program called visual communication technology mm -hmm. and you have to pick a specialization okay. so you have to dabble between photography interactive media videography and print advertising mm -hmm. i specialize in print advertising like that's my sauce that's yeah. what i do that's yeah. like i can whip up a flyer for you really quick yeah. but um the photography thing i i did a fifth year i was uh did a victory lap in college yeah. <laughs> so i um was basically done with my credits and stuff i just had a couple classes but i needed to stay full time so i took on like a lot of photography classes and that I'm like I really enjoyed it I love my professor um, he taught me everything I know his name is Antonio Scontrino yeah. he's an Italian professor uh, photographer yeah. <laughs> Italian photographer and he's really awesome at what he does and tapping into the fine art of it all but um, as far as like jumping right out of the gate with yeah. like f lighting and all of that technique mm -hmm. it just it, I didn't really 
It was something I learned gradually. You just experiment with things. You yeah. let me add this to the mix. Well, yeah. I watch a YouTube video. Let me try this. And you just add more and more layers to what you do. And then, you know, you just let let nature take its course, you know? Absolutely. And I'm glad that you brought up YouTube University because that's how that's how all of this came into play. I mean, you know, it, it, it's so funny because what I have learned is that the true successful people in this world are those who are able to capture the lessons from what they learn that may not entirely be based on the subject that they are interested in learning about, but they take those pieces and parts from different lessons and apply them to what it is that they are trying to achieve. I mean, no one's saying, okay, if you wanted to start a podcast, you need two different cameras, you need to go on Amazon and get two rinky-dink tripods right. and then, you know, this light set and this arm. And and then, you know, it's like even something like the weights to these microphones. I mean, do you see how they're like literally 2.5 pound, like barbell or dumb weights, you know? And what's funny is why do I have these? Because I had to jerry-rig this arm to fit a height that this traditionally wouldn't go to. But that's not without understanding what it was that I need based on what I was working with. And then you go to YouTube and you say, okay, how do I do this? Or how do I reverse engineer this? You took those first few steps and started your journey. What gave you the confidence to be able to do that? I guess other people believing in me, like, you know, you do something and you're like really insecure, like, you know, you know how to do it. You know, you trained really hard for it. You know, you've done the research, but no matter what, you're like, all right, let me see what happens. And then, you know, you take the pictures. Um, I borrowed my friend's uh, speed light, you know, you attach it to the top of your camera. And I always shot without lighting like yes. always outdoors like let me turn the iso up super high and just like be super still and once i used that speed light it changed the game like i'm like okay. oh ho, ho, ho. like this this was a game changer as far as adding that external flash to uh, my pictures mm-hmm. that really added a different layer to make it look really professional uh really like in a magazine yeah. just really like finished yeah. so it really paints a picture it's you know naturally will retouch a picture for you in a way yeah. so i do like experimenting with lighting and adding that to my photos so and when did you see within your pictures that adding that element to your craft was beneficial because before you're probably taking pictures and you're probably like oh like these look really good and then you're, you're you probably saw something else that either someone else did or you were given the opportunity to try it and you're like oh like what i was doing wasn't bad but this makes it so much better mm-hmm. i my i was like i said i was at that auto collection spot yeah. it was a not an auto collection, but a car dealership. And they have like this exclusive collection in the back. And they just wanted like some promo for pictures. And we had like five different models. And uh, my friend, he had an uh, the speed light that I'm talking about. And it was his. So he's like, here, try using this. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 I need that. So I got right on Amazon when I got home and I I bought one. And I'm I'm like, wow, I need to get an even better one. So that just use, using your friends things you know learning how to be a student you have to be coachable it's just like you know you can yes. you're not necessarily taking someone's idea or right. taking but you're in, becoming inspired by them yeah. and making it your own so i think that's important you have to listen to people see how people do their thing and make it your way i think one of the things that you just touched on even though not saying it you spoke to the importance of a community Mm -hmm. because if you don't have a community then you're figuring things out on your own Mm -hmm. do you know who mr beast is okay so mr beast is one of the biggest youtubers out there and he spoke about how it's so important to surround yourself around people who are doing the same thing as you so that you can all learn from each other, so that you don't need to make the same mistakes that someone already made months, weeks, years ago. And as long as you found yourself a community that's supportive, then you are going to put yourself light years ahead from where you would be if you were stuck doing it on your own, needing to experience all that stuff on your own. 
So do you have a good support system, oh, yeah. both f within the photography industry and then also just those supporting your dreams? <laughs> yes, and I feel Cleveland alone has, I mean, there's been so many different photographers that have shown so much love and, hey, I'm, I, I need, I can't show up to this shoot. Can you, sh I don't know oh, you, but wow. can you be here for me? Or, yeah. hey, book with him, look at his work, check out his work. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you see what they do, it doesn't have to be the exact same. There's a fluidity to it all. Like yeah. we all can do the same thing, but put our own spin to it, you know? Yeah. And I, I really feel some people get into, indulge into a hobby or a craft or a trade and they're like, I did this, this is mine. It's like, yeah. well, we can have like 20 different versions. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it will speak to different audiences, different people. Yeah. I can't be the voice or the photographer for everyone, yes. but he can, she can. So I think that's important to spread the love, yeah. um, let other people know there are other options. Mm -hmm. You don't want the same look and the photo every time. So right. I think it's definitely important to, you know, expand with other creatives. And then what was your other question? Those that are supporting your dream. Oh yeah, my friends, my family, yeah. my mom and dad are awesome. You oh, know, nice. without them, I probably wouldn't have the computer. I wouldn't have yeah. had the camera. So it's like, they really do look out. Um, they've always encouraged me to you know go after my dreams. It started, you know, with the, I took computer classes when I was like four years old. So yeah. tech oh, technology is, yeah, in my preschool, we had little, 1999, it's been going hard, but um, oh. they had little, you know, put a disc in or something and yeah. it would, it's a software game. Yeah. So I've been, technology and gadgets and things have always been a big part of my life. So I love to be able to share that with other people and see that, you know, other people know the same stuff, you know? Yeah. Now, do you have any big takeaways, especially from those people that you mentioned that you have pulled to implement into your own practice? That it's okay to reach out to each other and seek advice. Yeah. Um, if you can't, if you, we can't be everywhere, you know? Right. So it's, it's important to let each other, to, shout each other out you know yes. engagement is impo important on social media yep. platforms the today so yeah. you know reshare their post um yep. comment under their picture you know i i just it's the little things yeah. so I, I appreciate that stuff and that that sense of community alone i feel like doesn't get enough credit here in the city because we um i feel like we often see like okay we're in the midwest this is cleveland but it's like cleveland is it you know Cleveland is, Cleveland is popping like it's a great place so it's just like we have to you know accept that we are all here and we can yeah. lean on each other and you know take off in our own ways so absolutely and I grew up in Cleveland and I will forever be here there's so many unique and wonderful people all doing unique and wonderful things I mean it's every bit of why I started this. Like my my niche is th the effect that people have on others' self-esteem and confidence. And I think what's so beautiful about both of those things is it can fit into so many different categories. Right. Whether that be something that someone is able to make an impact on internally, mm -hmm. mentally, or physically, right. the, the possibilities of getting someone here to talk about how they affect people positively with what they do is, is, is endless, yeah. it's endless. And, and to your point, one photographer is going to be different from the next right. and the next and the next. Each one has their own niche. Each one has their unique way of proofing and distributing their art. And that's why I wanted to ask you, what has seemed to be the niche that either you found or found you? I think my niche that found me was portrait photography. Okay. Um, the fashion photography is very new, yeah. but it's still not, we're not too far off, okay. you know? Um, fashion photography is a little different because you're, you know, you're the voice for a brand. You're yes. the voice for a designer. You know, they make the clothes, but yeah. we are the voice, a photographer is the voice that sells the clothes. How are you going to mm -hmm. make that picture and make, you know, so-and-so on the street look like, oh my gosh, I need that. And my favorite people to shoot are people who are like, I, I don't take pictures, no, I, I'm not a model. And it's like, yeah. no, no, you can be, like, let me show you. And that's where I get fired up, because I'm like, don't doubt yourself. Yeah. The only difference between 
a person doing it and versus you not having it is you didn't do it, you know? So it's like yeah. if you took the picture with Colin, you, you would look like that, I promise. Right. And that's how that's what I would want people to believe when they when they work with me, you know? And once you see that picture, or I, I like taking candidates. Okay. So I like, you know, working with people, um, especially women, because yeah. I feel like women are not really um, – held to the standard they should be held at in society all the, as as much as they should be. Yeah. So when I get to take a picture of, you know, a woman executing a mood or a designer's brand or, yeah. you know, it's like kind of like a voice or a message they're sending that I can't really say or do, but it's like right. I can be the visionary behind it and yeah. capture it the way I find it most attractive. Yeah. And I think that's what photography is, like take yourself out of the work and capture that moment how you find it most attractive. And um, yeah, so I would say my niche is definitely like working with people. I love working with people who are first timers or- Really, that's you know, really fun. So, yeah. Now, do you find to be able to capture the candid mood and actions of someone that is done more so or in a photo shoot itself or is that at events that you are going to that you're allowed to take these photos and then snap in them because it, more so in that latter case you are getting candid right. emotions responses and things that are happening within the you know pop-up event or room or any bit of that mm -hmm. so it's definitely important to read the room yeah. so like at an event if I'm shooting like downtown at you know there's like 100 200 people in the venue or something yeah they're not all gonna be like, there's a set, there's a photographer, this is where I'm gonna be. So I just have to capture things the way I see most fun, yeah. the way that I would feel it, or I'm like, what would I be doing in that instance? Or, yeah. you know, I see someone really enjoying themselves or, you know, a relatable moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, shit. like that was me back in the day, <laughs> you know? So it's yeah. like, I capture it and I'm like, you know, that's that. Yeah. And then it goes into color correction, lighting. But with working on set, yeah. there is a lot of direction. I like to direct, I like to say, hey, think of that guy who left you and uh, what did you feel? And they're like, Ugh. and then, you know, boom, pick. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. and she's like, why would you say that? And it's like, that's just, sometimes I like you to think of a moment or yeah. I like to act like you just saw your kid, they got off the school bus, you haven't seen him in two weeks, and she, you know, then they're like, it helps them think and get into it. If you, Especially when you get there and you're like, what do I do? Right. Because even some of our best models are like, so what, what do you want? What, what should I be giving? Yeah. And, you know, they don't always know what to do, but I do like giving direction. I do like saying like, all right, here, hair flip in three, turn your head, you know? So it's like, it's fun, I love it. And then once the model and I get on the same page, yeah. uh, it's like a basketball play. And yeah. it's like, that's when it becomes fun. And yeah. especially after those warm up shots, it's like, see, you got it. Yeah. So. And I think that especially those first timers, they need that direction mm -hmm. because I don't wanna say like embarrassment's the right word, and I don't even want to use the word like uncomfortable, but what it is is unfamiliar. Right. They are not sure of how to feel because they've never been in that position, situation, or given that direction before. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so powerful for you to recognize that by putting themselves in a position in their mind based on a previous event mm -hmm. to give the reaction that you want. I mean, that's it's it's kind of like a human cheat code. It can be obnoxious at times, yeah. but usually we laugh it off and it's yeah. just like, but it's it's always a good time and always in good taste, right. you know? And it's really important to talk to your model before or sub okay. to subjects before, yeah. families before, like, so what do you like? What, what, what aren't you feeling today? And you know, then they'll be like, oh, my shirt keeps falling and uh, I'm I'm like, oh, okay, I'll make sure we c get that together in, yeah. in, in post-production right. or um, what's going on. Like, I have a blood mission. It's really bothering me. I can't stop thinking about it. And it's like, all right, all right, well, it won't be there in the yeah, end. So is, just yeah. do your thing. Right. So I think that's important to feel people out here. They're, you know, what they like, what they don't like, because it's important, you know, having respecting their boundaries right. and making sure, you know, you're delivering but you know what you know good content whether they know what they're getting or not you still want to make them feel important you still want to inquire so <clears throat> absolutely and i think what's so great about that is the collaboration mm -hmm. between you and who you're shooting right. but it, it's it, it's so interesting to me what all can be done in the post op 
Yeah. Or what is it like? What can be done in in the post production? Yeah. I mean, goodness. Sometimes I'll record these episodes, and some people will be like. I'll, I'll show them like a little bit of like how it came out right after this, like the raw footage. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, like I look so pale in that. And it's like, don't worry. We just take care of it all, all in post. Or like you said, you can adjust like blemishes that are there. Or, you know, like I'm sure you, can, you even have your tips and tricks with like the double chin and stuff like that. So talk more about the editing process because I would imagine that the side of editing is not more important than getting the photo itself but plays a bigger role than most people know yeah. it really does yeah so what i do is i upload everything onto my computer okay and i open uh the images up in lightroom is that adobe yep adobe lightroom so i use the adobe creative suite with everything okay. and then in adobe lightroom I do a lot of color correcting, sharpening, yeah. um, masking objects, separating them from the front and the back. And then I will do a little smoothing, sharpening, just a little bit, and um, just delete what I don't like. And then I'll, I even like with my models, if we have a time, if we have the time, I'm like, you can go through what you don't like because yeah. I don't want to, the subject and the model fall in love with different pictures it's never the same picture so whenever i leave a picture in there i'm like eh, that's okay like i'll just leave it in there yeah. that's the one she posts every day or he posts every day and i'm like oh my goodness so um after my lightroom process if i need to go into photoshop i haven't been photoshopping too much just yeah. with certain things but lightroom really has uh upgraded with some awesome features yeah. with you know masking um, retouching, blemishing, fixing, you know, just little things. So Lightroom goes a long way. But with Photoshop, say you do have a double chin and you don't like it. Right. Nothing wrong with it. But if you don't want it there and you tell me you don't want it there, you know, we can puppet warp it. Or, you know, yeah. or we can shrink, we can smudge, we yeah. can, um, if there's people there. I did a maternity shoot. Oh, nice. And there was a lot of people walking around at Edgewater, but okay. they're not in the picture. But it was just like, you know, that's something that's good with Photoshop. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, replacing trees. They have a little more accurate precision algorithm with like, you know, yeah. replacing things like that. But yeah. if the lighting and the is good, you usually don't have to do too much post-production unless, you know, you want like, you know, to tap into the more fine art side of things. Yeah. But my pictures are very, I like... Not a lot, not too heavy on the filters, um, but just like I like, you know, saturation, just, yeah. you know, filterless pictures. Like I like to see what the picture really look like. So right. um, and then when I send the clients pictures, I send them a Lightroom link and they have the option of keeping it. And then I'm like, you have that link for like 90 days. Nice. Just download what you need to download, export what yeah. you need to export. And then boom. So it's really easy transfer. Some people prefer Google Photos. I don't mind. It's like. It's just like whatever, yeah. but Lightroom is how I do things in a, the whole Adobe Creative Suite. Yeah. Did you know that you were getting into as much editing that you walked into once you started professionally doing photography? Not at all, because you know things change, trends change, makeup trends change. Yeah. You can't edit pictures how you did in 2013 oh. like you do now. Yeah. You know everyone's you know set up different. Everyone's look is different. So um, you do have to pay attention to trends. Um, look at Instagram. Look at social media. Look at the top influencers. Like what do people like to look at? Look yeah. at Vogue look at magazines um in your surroundings and then what speaks to you because you have to make things you have to make it you that's the whole part of being a creative like there's really no right way to it right. and there's a million ways to do one thing right. like, like even in photoshop you know you want to edit a blemish shop there's like 20 different ways to do that you know right. so there's not one right way to things there's there's there are ways. <laughs> and that's why I would imagine it's so important for everyone to be upfront, honest within that collaboration process, yep. because these social media agencies or I mean, and we have so many local social media marketing agencies, yeah. so many. And one of the things that um, I think her name's Anastasia, she posted something and said, like, keep a theme within your profile, yep. both on your profile grid and then on your stories as well. Yep. So I would imagine it's part of your process to 
understand someone's look so that you're giving them pictures that ultimately they're they're happy with that also fit their theme is is that right Mm -hmm. you have to uh like i said you have to take yourself out of out of it sometimes and see what other people need what is their branding because if you know you like uh in the field and daisy's aesthetic but they like you know darker saturated you know monotone it's like that's not daisy's in the field you know you got to you have to read the room. You have to cl- collaborate and communicate with your client and make sure, like, hey, are we on the same page? Are we on the right yeah. track? So I am a guy. I, I, I like affirmation. Like, I am an affirmation guy. Like, you know, let me know if I'm doing it right or not. So, so. Yeah, because, I mean, let's be honest. Someone who is either unhappy or not 100% satisfied is is not going to be the subject that will be pleasurable to continue to shoot if it's not going in the way that they want it because then it's getting into their head and then you're not being able to capture what you need to be able to capture for it to turn out every bit of the way that it, it, it can. No, exactly. So I think that's so that's so powerful to acknowledge and understand that you are the professional and part of your professional process is taking yourself out but that's got to be hard because you're so creative and in so much ways because you are the professional like you know what would or wouldn't work even in relation to what they're trying to accomplish so they may show you what their theme is and what they're looking for but then like how 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 not in parallel with it would it be for them to say that say something that didn't go along with their theme and you're just like wait a minute you told me that you wanted this and this is the route that we're going yet you give me this one little direction that goes against that Mm -hmm. and it, it, it i mean is that just where you need to give them what they want or do you help coach to say you know this this doesn't fit what we originally sought out to do. Yep, as a creative, you do a kind of you can't always say yes. You can't. Yes. Always, it's like you know, um, I watched one of your episodes. You know, she yeah. said I think she's a hairstylist. She's like I, I can't just say yes to everything, yes. and I think that's important because, um, as Steve Jobs said, design is not always how it looks. It's about how it works. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of that's applicable to a lot of creatives in what we do. It's not about always, you know, oh, this looks good. It's like, is it working? Yeah. Like, you know, are you delivering? Like, are you executing? So sometimes you do have to take an L and yeah. say like, hey, like, how can how can we reassess this? Like, yeah. what what was your approach with it? Or like, what about this? Or give them options. Mm-hmm. Not all the time, but that's what, when contracts and things come in that can help you with that. And like, yeah, so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So when someone ultimately says, okay, like I want to go through the process of doing the photo shoot, what, how how does that start? How does it go? What's the time frame from the idea of starting a photo shoot to ultimately getting those final photos? So it depends on just my workload. Mm -hmm. Like usually I have, you know, three to four shoots a month that I have to work on editing. Yeah. Um, and then with my, you know, real job, just depends on like what what's going on. But yeah. I usually tell clients like, hey, I'll, I'll have these to you within two weeks. Nice. Um, engagement photos and things of that nature. I'm like, hey, if you pick like two, I can get you these out. I can rush these out to you, but give me some time yes. to do the rest and then i also like that because sometimes it allows them to look at filters some people like filters some people don't some people want it sharp some people don't you know so it's just like i like to hear their insecurities like i like to fix it you know some people are like no let me work my magic i'm like no let me hear what you want what you want because like that way it saves us both some time and we're both satisfied but um pictures editing pictures like two weeks for me um if that sometimes it just like on a good sunday i can get a lot done Yes. So, um, pictures is fun though. I love retouching. That's like I'm like, ooh, I got pictures to edit. I always say that. So, um, and then the photo shoots, they usually go for about two hours. Okay. Um, some people are like, okay, Colin, can we be done? And I'm like, no, no, you got another hour. Yeah. So, uh, I had an engagement for shoot, and she's like, we got the shots. Like, I'm good. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, we did take a lot. I'm good. You good? Yeah. And it was a good trade off, you know. Okay. So it depends. Uh, every situation is different. Fashion shows, yeah. uh, working for designers or boutiques, that's also different timing, you know. So 
like I said, there's a fluidity to it all. Um, I feel like in the creative industry, there's like, you just never know how things will end up sometimes. But right. um, my shoots really go, they're fun. They, um, I'm really fun, spontaneous, yeah. adventurous guy. So I like to have a good time. I like it to seem like, you know, it was like a kick it to hang out. Because yeah. it's like, you know, we shouldn't be overthinking this too much. It should, it be, should fun. be fun. Yeah, so that's what I try to leave people with when they shoot with me like did you have fun like do yeah. you want to shoot again all right so and they usually do yeah. so i like that so i was doing some research on you and saw that there was a bunch of edgewater or just like pictures on lake erie mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily a place that you can get as many pictures of between like literally the months of like november until basically may so where are you doing your shots outside of those summer months so outside of those summer months sometimes like if i am working with a designer or i am working with you know another model i will be you know i, I will i have traveled to miami i have traveled to la oh, wow. i have so it's like sometimes uh I will be in other locations, but yeah. I do make some good sauce out of Edgewater. Yeah. Um, Edgewater, I have even photoshopped the water blue. I have oh, made the like replace the sky. Yeah. So um, yeah. Edgewater is great. It really a lot of my friends from other like surrounding states or yeah. who live on the West Coast are like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in Cleveland. Like, <laughs> so it's a. Uh, I, I, I make do with Edgewater going in the morning at like eight, nine. Um, the weather is not always nice in those pictures. A lot of the models are freezing. Uh, yeah. There are people there assisting, like holding their coats, like, yeah. all right, next next change. Um, and, you know, they're in their coat or in a blanket. Yeah. So it doesn't always look as glamorous as the pictures look. Uh, there, it, it is a grind, you know. Yeah. After a shoot, I have like at, on the beach, I'll have sand everywhere and my shoes. Oh, yeah. I have to like hold my camera up, my bags. Which it's like so literally <laughs> those sand shoots uh are crazy but i make do with what i have you know yeah. and that's important as a creative you won't always have all of the tools in front of you right. but just make stuff right. just go yeah. like see what happens and like you'll see what you need or you'll come into opportunities to yeah. you know gain those necessary resources and tools but you just have to make do with what you have yeah so with the portrait photography that you're doing do you find as though people are doing that just for personal reasons professional reasons or like who are these people and what are they doing and why are you uh, shooting them and why are they being shot? That's funny. My parents always ask, so what are you going to do with those? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, relax. Yes. So a lot of them, some people want pics for the gram. Like, yeah. you know, some people want pics for LinkedIn. Okay. Um, they're small business. Yeah. They want new headshots. Some people just want to, you know, I have done calendars for lovers and things like that. Right. You know, I don't post those ones, but, you know. Right. Some people just want, you know, sports picks or they they want a, some memorabilia or their their kid really has no professional pictures. So it's like Colin's there like I, he can. do, And I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. here. So yeah. it ranges. You never know what people want pictures for. Um, sometimes it can seem like you want just pics for your birthday for Instagram. All right. But yeah. it's like that's what we do these days. Right. And I love it. Um, yeah. Sometimes I did a couple maternity shoots. I've done, um, I've gotten a new job shoot. The girl yeah. got a new job. Oh. Someone had a breakup and wanted to do a shoot and, yeah. you know, bought a bunch of stuff off of Amazon. And we just like, you know, really did it up on the set. But it's just like, you never know what people want shoots for. It ranges. Like, right. it could be, hey, we're going on a date. Can you be there? And I'm like, yep, I'll be there. Okay. So I've done a lot of, I've been in a lot of weird places. I've hidden in bushes. So... <laughs> You just never know what people want pictures for. <laughs> yeah. No, because, I mean, you, you ph photographed a lot of very attractive yep. women. <laughs> uh, if you haven't checked out his Instagram, go check it out. Check Plug it. it real quick. What is it? Colin Mac Photo. Colin with two L's, M A C photo. No underscores, just Colin Mac Photo. Yeah. Uh, they won't be disappointed. Yeah, not um, at all. But w w what you're doing is capturing that moment for those people to look back at mm -hmm. f at any point in their life and i not this isn't like conspiracy theorist or anything like that but like it amazes me what cameras do like in the same which way that i don't really understand how planes fly like i almost don't understand how a cameras work i mean to its core you are capturing 
the light that's being reflected off of objects within that split millisecond. I mean, that amazes me. And everything comes from the color, not that it is, but that it's being reflected. And to understand the true color of something comes from something referred to as white balance. And that's something that I've had to play around with here in the studio. It will take forever. It'll take literally forever. I mean, these iPhones that I'm recording off of, Mm -hmm. I had an iPhone 7, an iPhone 11, and an iPhone 14. And what was different amongst all of them was the... I don't even like the white balance or just like the tone or the filter or whatever it was like it was different and it's like we're sitting in the same room no more than three feet away from each other i need to be able to record off devices that look as though we are only three feet apart and i found that the best way for me to do that was to just get two of the same cameras and then at that point we're dealing with the same lenses. We're dealing, I don't even know what aperture is, but like I'm sure we're dealing with the same aperture. Like you would know more than I would about why continuity among cameras is probably important with doing something like this. But I can't stress enough how much goes into what you do that just is not seen. So what would you say to other photographers looking to get into the scene and get into what you do to get them started uh, on either the right foot or the right path? Well, one thing with photography is it's not just going to fall into your hand. There is a science to it, you know, as we just discussed with white balance, aperture, ISO. So you have to just get out there and screw up. You know, you just got to take some pictures. You know, having a camera is great because... You can go on a walk. It's like your friend sometimes. And you you can get lost with it for hours and just take pictures and, you know, execute different strategies, lights, techniques, um, settings, people. And and when you really get down how you really like to see things, when you have that down, it becomes consistent. It's kind of like a model with posing. She doesn't just go out there walking or go to a photo shoot and boom, you know, it takes practice. You have to practice your walk. You have to practice, practice and memorize your posing so when you when you memorize those light settings or you're like memorizing okay i need to be here i need to be here during this light all right what would this be on if the sun was this bright or what light settings would i do what tools would i need in the dark as i so i can get a still picture um well i need flashes but it's all about just you know the time you put into it you know you have to apply yourself you have to have a plan and you have to have something up here you know you can't just I'm going to do photography and make charge thousands. It's it's just not how it works, you know. And I, I like it because, you know, it it's a passion of mine. I like the way I like, I like the way people feel afterwards, especially after they see the picker. They're like, oh, is that me? It's like, yep, yeah, that's nice. you. So that's great, especially especially for those people who who are who do have low self-esteem or who are insecure you know as a photographer i notice things like that a lot because it's like you know i get to creep on you behind the camera for like you know two hour sessions so you see a lot with you spend a lot of time with people you know you you learn a lot so i just want to make sure you know people are comfortable and you know they feel their maximum self so yes and i i think you although although i haven't known you for that long i do believe that you have the ability to make people feel comfortable i mean i feel comfortable talking to you and the fact that you were able to just come pop on and and do this also with you not knowing exactly yeah. what you're getting into <laughs> not at all <laughs> right it's like that is what it speaks to your ability to try new things communicate with people and ultimately push out what's going going to be a phenomenal product but like you said that comes through experience and that experience can be you taking your own pictures or it can also be learning from something like youtube yeah i mean goodness and people yes the community back to the community it's so important i i can't even begin to just bring into words how much 
further ahead you're going to be if you have support and you have people that are helping you through what questions that you have. And because of that, I wanted to ask you, what were some of those big unknowns or those big questions that you had when you first started? Some of those big questions that I had when I first started would have definitely been, okay, how do I make money off of this? Because yes. I like it. Yes. And it's like, I, I feel so bad charging people for this, or I don't know how to bring up the business side of it. So I, I, I wish I would have studied or asked how to approach it from a more business standpoint. But yeah. when you're doing something just as a hobby or an escape, you don't really think of like, I'm going to make money off this soon. Right. So right. it's um, that... Uh, just not being scared, you know. You just gotta, you just gotta go buy the stuff and try it and screw it up. <laughs> like that. I mean, yes. you can, you'll be able. The stuff is replaceable. Yes. You can get new lenses. You yes. can get new lights. You can get new tripods. Just go try it. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid of who's watching either. Yes. Like, just go do it. A lot of us, especially here, you know, in the Midwest, it's like, oh my God, they're staring. They're yes. staring. I'm yes. like, you know. I, I, I'm going to just have to be stared at. And that's one thing I've been committing to. Like, you're just going to have to stare at me today yeah. because it's like, you know, you got to put your, you know, you just got to do it because right. in a week from now and a month from now or even a year, you know, things change quick. So when you have that memory to look back on, you know, you won't remember like, oh, my God, I was so scared or I didn't have this money for that. You won't even remember those things. So you just just get out there and do it. Yes. And what I've learned is looking on something like Facebook Marketplace yep. or looking on Let Go, yep. there are so many people that are selling professional gear. I mean, these lights that I have right here, I got these off Facebook Marketplace because someone was selling them for both for like 80 bucks. Yeah. I mean, that's a steal. That's a steal. (laughs) So in other words, if you are looking to get started, you don't need the top of the line stuff. You don't need any of that stuff. Get started with either what you can afford or what you are comfortable starting with. Yeah, start start producing. Like, just start making things. Just do it. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean... You, there's never a right way. You will find it, you're always going to be like, oh, I should have did that differently. Yeah. So you just, like I said, just just get a starter camera, get a starter something, and just start. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be top of the line. And then as you, you know, move in an organic way, move genuinely. You you, you may come across a new camera, or you may come across the funds to get it. It's just like you just never know. But don't compare yourself too much to people and what they have. Yeah. You know, you don't know people's journeys you don't know how people afford it's just like just stay focused on you know you and what you're doing yes to your point you're not going to learn how to swim unless you get in the water and you're not going to learn also from your mistakes or just continue to evolve as a professional if you're not pushing out content nothing is going to be perfect especially at the start so your ability to push out content and continue to improve upon it each and every time is what's going to get you to where you want to be i can't even it's i can relate to that with this you know it's just like every single time that i was just like huh maybe this would be a good idea i tried it and then it was like huh maybe i didn't like exactly how that worked out but i took a piece from what i learned through trying that to then implement it into the next idea that i had and the next idea that i had um but my brother it was the best words of advice that he ever gave me. He's like, just start, just start pushing stuff out, just start doing things. And you know, that's where we started doing the podcast on YouTube that we're pushing out full episodes. And then uh, uh, on Instagram, we're doing reels. Okay. And then uh, YouTube, we're doing shorts and stuff like that. But it's so funny. And I'm so glad that I'm speaking to you about the whole back end editing side of it. Because like, when I wanted to start this, it was to have conversations with people like you. I knew because of just I, I knew a little bit more about what I was getting myself into. But I mean, it's not until I spend you know, an entire Saturday on doing nothing besides 
exporting, editing, re-exporting, creating thumbnails, doing this and that. I mean, this will eat up a significant part of your day. But when you enjoy it and when it's something that you're good at and you start to see some momentum building, that's where it gets exciting. But what you can't do is let other people's success deter you. I mean, I I guarantee you this, people are going to watch this and they're going to say, I want to be with, I want to be where Colin is. (laughs) And, but the funny thing is, is where they are thinking that same thing is exactly what you were probably thinking about someone else. And now look at where you are. So how have you kept yourself motivated? Ask questions like if you see someone you admire or you see someone's work or you see like their clientele or, you know, how they do their thing, like talk to them, send them a message, say like, yo, your stuff is amazing. Like say stuff like that. You never know what it can turn into. Just let people know like, hey, they might not have a good response, but oh, well, you did your thing, you know, and what you what good you put out there comes back to you. So um, don't. I. Figure out ways that you can, you know, be inspired by things. Don't look at it like, oh, I don't have that. Like, figure out how you can incorporate it into your next piece or how you can put your spin on it. Yeah. So um, you just, you, you got to you gotta be independent. You got you to gotta work independently. Definitely collaborate, you know. Yes. But talk to people. Don't, don't be offended or, um, like, scared of people. Like, yeah. really inquire. Ask questions. Show love. Like, it really will take you a long way. Like, yeah. seriously. So, and, and, and be available. You know, I feel like a lot of us in this new culture, this not new culture, but this new age, we are we have such access to celebrities and celebrity culture. And, you know, we're starting to see like, oh, maybe I'm oversharing or I'm posting too much information. And I feel like some of us, you know, get scared and we're like, we don't share too. We we don't want to share too much or we feel like we're, we're maybe being annoying. But no, push that content out. It's speaking to someone like you never know who. And, you know, you and I look very different, but you know, both of our pieces of bodies of work speak to each other. And, um, you know, like I said, a simple message or like goes a long way. So you never know. 100%, 100%. And to speak to exactly what you were talking about, showing support through either just letting them know that you appreciate their work or sharing likes or talking about, you know, sending an email. I mean, that's literally what I did. I was just like, I think that you're doing something so special and selfishly, I want to share what it is that you're doing. And I want to spread the good word that, that for, for what you are doing. So thank you for being open to exactly doing this. I mean, you're, 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 you're practicing what you're preaching by coming in here and, and speaking to every bit that you're doing. So if people wanted to book a session with you, where would they go? How do they get a hold of you? What's the best way for that to happen? So I have a couple of different outlets. I'm really chill about it. Um, you can email me. You can access that through my Instagram page. You can DM me. And then I also have a website, www.colinstevens.com. It's Colin with two L's, Stevens with a PH. So uh, that's kind of like my basic little portfolio site. Um, yeah. But I do take inquiries through there. Nice. You can text me. You can, you know, DM me. I have my personal. I have my personal page. Uh, so a lot of people will notice Colin Mac photo through there, and you know that's the handle. Yep. Uh, my personal page is Col M Step. So C O L L M Step, and yeah, you'll see access to Colin Mac photo. And then I do have lip balms coming out. Oh, is um, that right? I've been making lip balms. The lip bodega. No uh, we don't have the website up yet, but yeah. um, it's like a lip butter, all natural lip balm. Beeswax. How did that come about? I just needed things to do. Like I'm, I was like, let me look up a lip balm recipe. I'm always losing these Burt's Bees. So I'm like, yes. I'm going to find my own tubes that I like off Amazon. Yeah. And I bought like $100 worth of ingredients and just started, you know, yeah. whipping it in the kitchen and I'm like oh yeah these are great so my friends love them yeah. I uh, design labels so it's just like I don't have everything all at once it's like always just like uh, 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 but I just sold out of my last batch so I'm going to 
try and relaunch that in March. Um, we're just taking a break, like I said. Yeah. I don't want to burn out from my hobbies, you know. Yeah. I think it's important to step back from things if it's, you know, becoming too much. So yeah. I just want to be able to come out with a force with that. Yeah. So Limited release. <laughs> Limited release. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, how it, like you said that you were just looking for things to do and that the Burt's Bees were just walking their way out of your pockets, so you're looking to do your own. But, um, you know, aside from those reasonings, like, we talk about like a serial entrepreneur, if you will. Like, yeah. why, why? Why? Because first, I always see vendor tables and vendor events and yeah. things like that. So I'm like, what could I do? But I never really thought or, you know, participated in many. Yeah. And I'm always losing my chapsticks. And I'm like, that could be something really fun. But there was like a Instagram reel that came up and a lady was making like at home chapsticks. And I'm like, wait, yeah. I could do that, but like really turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> and I have these uh, wooden tubes. I should have brought you some. I'll right. ship you some. Right. Um, but I kind of want my theme for that to be, you know, Nantucket, uh, Hamptons, Abercrombie, uh, in the woods on a hike. So that's going to be like the theme for that. But it's just coming along. I'm just having fun with it. You know, it's yeah. it's a nice escape when I have time. But, you know, I do work. Totally. So it's like when I have the time, I'm like, I'll get to the lit bodega. But I want to be able to put my all into it. Not like, ah, yeah, oh, this one's short peppermint or this one. So it's yeah. like peppermint and rosemary. Nice. They're amazing. Um, super hydrating. <laughs> so now, is that a soul project, or is that something that you're working on with someone? It's a soul project. Um, I eventually want to collaborate with you know my friends and have them sell them and like you know hey sell these and make it like an influencer type of program thing. Right. But I'm still putting a lot of thought into that. Yeah. But um, the Lit Bodega, you can follow the Lit Bodega on Instagram. It's like up and coming. Um, I will have that restock next month. Nice. But right now we're just getting out of February alive. <laughs> um, there is a very well known, um, have you ever heard of Dr. Rapika? Oh, I have not. No, he's, I believe he's out of Warren, Ohio, okay. uh, referred to as the Lip God. And he does a phenomenal job of marketing. Okay. He, he does great work, but also the way that he is able to market his business, it, it's truly phenomenal. It is so much more than a business. It's a brand. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It and the ability to have such a grasp on marketing is a skill in and amongst itself. I mean, it's wild. It's wild. It's inspiring. Um, talking about inspirations, though, that's what I wanted to transition to. One thing that I always love to ask people is what makes them smile. Yep. So, Colin, I wanted to ask, what makes you smile? What makes me smile? My friends and my parents, yeah. they uh, they are my support system. They always tell me to do it. They are always rooting for me. Yeah. So um, empowering them or seeing them kill it at what they do or seeing them happy or even if they're like distraught and going through it and they're like, Colin, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. come chat, <laughs> like come chat, you know, like, yeah. oh, be done, you know. But then it's yeah. like, oh, you, you guys, you guys good. All right. You know, so it's just like I love being that healer for people. Yeah. Um, but definitely my my uh my parents and my friends they make me smile especially like i said when they're happy and they're killing it at what they're doing that makes me glow because i'm like all right everyone's good prayers are working so uh, and then you said inspirations yeah my mom and dad again my mom she's uh she's really cool she's a very uh very poised elegant classy lady she's really spunky she's fire there we go my mom's fire <laughs> and then my dad's like the calmest just gentle giant um he's really about you know serving the community giving back so they're both my mom's an educator so she was a principal all my life growing up and then my dad's a football coach um he coaches at cleveland heights okay. and he uh gets like thousands of kids into college all year. Yeah. His, so it's like, I really appreciate what they do and they handle everything with such grace. And, um, you know, they always go about everything with class and, and, and of good taste. So seeing uh, the things that they've accomplished in life and <laughs> where they've gotten me, yeah. is, is, it's inspiring. And, you know, I, I just want to do nothing but to make them proud. You know, some picks might be like, Colin, who's that? I'm like, fine. <laughs> It is what it is. I just, what I, I like that they, uh, 
they are my biggest like hype people. So yeah. that's so great to hear. And and I, I can relate to that because in the same which way my parents are the A ones and stay one. Yep. You know, they are they've always been supportive no matter what it is that I have done or what it is that I need to be picked up from after having just done. <laughs> so the opportunity to speak with someone who who shares the the same value yep. that I see within my parents that you do with yours. It's it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. So uh, on behalf of them, thank you. Yeah, thanks, for, Mom and Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, once again, I want to thank you no, thank for you. being open to doing this. I like, you know, it, it, it's funny because what I wound up doing is I had Colin in here and I said, listen, I don't know much about you, but like, that's the point. Right. What I want to do is have these types of conversations, mm -hmm. whether that be with people that I do or don't know, or to your point, not a lot of people have done something like this, No, but it's in the same which way where it would be totally okay and what will turn into be comfortable for them to do a photo shoot for the first time. Yep. Like same thing here. Mm -hmm. Like it's easy going. Yeah. Really all we're doing is having a conversation. Right. And then, you know, <clears throat> it's like, and then, yeah, you're, you're, you're on camera and it's just <laughs> like so much fun because guess what? I, I'll be able to share this with you and you'd appreciate it. I always tell people that I'm building a portfolio yes. of conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm looking back. This will be our sixth or seventh episode, okay. something like that. I No, actually, it'll be our seventh. Nice. And it's so important for me to share all of the great things that people are doing. And then selfishly, it is nice to have these little pocket of conversations that are recorded that I can refer back to because this is so much fun. This yes. is what I enjoy. In the same which way that you found your passion doing that, yes. I have found a passion doing this. So once again, thank you so much for no coming problem. on. No awesome. problem. Thank you.